Good morning, everyone. Good morning and happy, happy Monday. I can't believe it's already yet another Monday and we are in June. I'm gonna wait for a couple minutes for some people to come join us before I get started, but my goodness, I'm hoping you're having a great start of your week. This is Pray First. My name is Ann Starker, and I get to be one of your hosts. And this week, I'm taking Pastor Brandy's spots. We're kind of flip-flopping around because that's what we can do when we have the flexibility of what we're doing. So anyways, um, so I am super excited. So Pray First is a conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. And this is just our way of making sure that we're keeping the principle of keeping God first. Um, <clears throat> Every, every every morning. Yes, we do this Monday through Friday, but of course, Saturday and Sunday, you should do this as well. I'm going to do a couple shout outs. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Neil. Good, mo good morning, Renee. How are you doing, Br uh, Brenda? While you're here, go ahead and please um, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, and um, make sure you share this out as well. Um, also, if you see on the side, we're doing some hearts and some um, thumbs up, and that is all for you new people, and just actually just to welcome each other, just to say, hey, we are so excited excited you're here. Welcome to our Pray First family. So this morning, as I'm getting started, I was thinking, oh, I'm excited because I love to read from the message version. I really do. I love to glean everything that we're learning. And so when I posted out there, I don't know if you guys saw me post out that as far as how, you know, we're continuing in 2 Corinthians. And so Paul is sharing with us and it's all super exciting. And as I'm there, God keeps saying, no, 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 don't. I am notorious for getting ahead of myself. My brain, my mouth goes so fast. And instead, I just wanted to pause for a moment and I wanted to pause and reflect on yesterday <clears throat> and share a little bit out with you. So I'm not sure how many of you guys were able to participate in our first Sunday experience here at Cross Point Church. Now, pray first, you know, that's obviously, um, it's, it's hosted by Pastor Doug Bell, and he's also the pastor of Cross Point Church. And a lot of times, a lot of our things, you know, just kind of intermeld with each other. And so I know that we've been talking about the Pastor Doug page, we've been talking about every social media page we have. And so I thought, what better way to get started this morning just to give you a brief what happened yesterday. So before I get too much deeper, hey guys, if you were here yesterday for Cross Points Go Out Sunday, um, please hashtag yep yep or say yes I was or just something so I can see how many people out there were there because let me tell you, it was absolutely amazing. And before I dive into some of these pictures, I just wanna give you a brief summary. So those of you that know Cross Point Church where Pastor Doug is a senior pastor, we close the doors the first Sunday of every month. And that is our way that we can actually go out right there on the screen behind me. Of course, it's reversed, but that's okay. That's where we go out. We close the uh, physical doors of the church building. We go out and we compel them to go in. So uh, what we did this first Sunday is we decided that we were going to touch the children in our community. So this is, a, this is a cause so near to me because food insecurity is a real thing. So <clears throat> Destiny Center is a nonprofit in our area, and it's a community resource center that's kind of, it's, it's actually even on wheels. Because at Destiny Center, one of their foundations is you can have all the resources in the world, but if you can't get, if you can't access those resources, then they're just resources are kind of a waste. So Destiny, Destiny Center was founded on actually taking resources to where they are in need. So Destiny Center had this project and it's called the Summer Food Initiative. And what they were gonna do is they were gonna pack lunches for over 500 students that had signed up at the, um, in the school year to have summer food delivered to them. These are kids that usually get part of the summer, uh, the, the school food program or backpack programs where they actually send lunches home. So during the summertime, it's harder for them. And so Destiny Center recognized the needs, went ahead and said, okay, what can we do about it? But here's the cool part. It wasn't just Cross Point part partnering with Destiny Center. I mean, that in itself is pretty darn amazing, right? You got a nonprofit and a church and coming together. You add in a grocery store, Piggly Wiggly, which we, we try to at First Sunday bless and you know do things for their employees. But you know the manager over at um, Piggly Wiggly, David? He was able to acquire all of this food. No other place could, was able to do it because it's hard to get. If you're, if you're packing lunches every day for 500 kids, that's over 10,000 children per month. So he had to get 10,000 cans of protein, 10,000 fruits. I mean, there was so much that went involved in this. 
And then you had places like Old Town Fitness. They're like, hey, we have a spare spot. Would you like to come? You guys are welcome to use it at no cost to you. We want to be a part of this. And they joined in and said, you can use our space, which we needed the space to be able to do what we're able to do. And then you've got other places, you know, like... There's just so much, there's so many things that came together. Oh, do you know the DeSoto County Schools actually got involved? They contacted us and they had some, they, they had some teachers, they had some students that said, we would love to be able to come help you guys do this. So they showed up. So we had over 200 people coming together in the community. People, I mean, there's just, it was mind blowing. And leading up to this, it was so, it was, it was just incredible. Every step of the way, I was like, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. And there, yes, there's a ton of logistics involved to get all the food. And Debbie House, bless her heart, and Casey Hedges, bless her heart. They did so much work. Um, that's that's their, their, their um, Destiny Center staff. Sorry, I'm so excited. I can't even stand myself. They did so much work to make this happen. But right now, all that work, all that logistics, I just, I'm not going to show you guys a ton of pictures. Just a couple because I want to show you. Okay. So look at that. That is an overall, overall pictures. I'm gonna try and bring you in just a little bit. All of those, I'm not good at this, are sack lunches. And they're divided into five days of the week. So you've got a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday there. Because each, you don't want, if you're a kid, you don't wanna eat the same thing every day of the week, right? So we separated them so we made sure that each, <coughs> that child would have something different each day of the week. Look at, okay, look at this. Look at those people. That There are over 200 people there on a Sunday morning where most of our, and we're not, oh, by the way, Congregational Health Network showed up as well. Jennifer Garrett, thank you so much for all your help as well and everything you do for the churches around our area. But look at all those people. You've got purple shirts representing Destiny Center. You've got some Crosspoint shirts out there. And again, we had a ton of people that were not Crosspoint or Destiny Center there as well. Just another close up of people. Just a lot of people there. It was just like, it was crazy amount of busy bees. And then here's the best part. See all those lunches right there? See those people in line? Those people were in line to deliver the sack lunches. So all of those lunches, I'm gonna go back in a second, but all of those lunches had to be delivered to, um, it actually was 150 families were represented in over those, those 500 kids. And so all those, so at, when they were done packing, everyone took a route, there's four or five, three to five routes per, yes, Tasha, delivery was the best, it's so amazing. And then what the delivery drivers got to do is they actually got to go <coughs> and take these bags of food and take them to these kids. And look, so that colored dot there, that's just so that we could help designate which one was like the Monday through Friday bag. And I can't remember what teal was, but you know, on my post, I put that people matter and the people that matter were not just the children, not just the children that we got to love on and make sure that they were not hungry this summer because that's what Jesus tells us to do. We're supposed to take care of these kids. It doesn't matter if we're just praying for them. And I'm not trying to, I love the fact that Crosspoint is a church that does, and that's what we did. We went out and we did. Um, we were physically, actively showing love to other people, and we get to do that. We get to do that because we have an incredible pastor that says we're closing the doors, and that gives us a Sunday that we can just go out and physically love these people. But it's not just the kids. That's where I got sidetracked in my own brain. It's the fact that, again, over 200 people came in. So when I say people matter, it's not just the people that we're helping. It's you. It's you because you get to be a part of something bigger than yourselves when you participate in this. Altruism, where you're just volunteering, you're giving of yourself, of yourself, it is so important. I'm humbled that I get to be a part of this, guys. It's, And we're gonna do this again at Crosspoint uh, um, the first Sunday in July. If you want to be a part of something this amazing, please message message Destiny Center, mess, message Crosspoint. We will get you involved because you guys, you. You want, you want to be a part of this. It was so amazing. Like I was on a high afterwards while I was there. People were like, are you tired? I'm like, oh, I'm tired, but I'm so excited because this was an incredible undertaking. I remember a pastor had said, he's like, you know what? We really can't fail because we're doing it. You know, like um, the fact that we said yes to over 500 kids, whew. But we did, and we did it, and we did it with excellence, and all the people coming back. And again, so yeah, we have 500 kids, but it's their families, and not only their families, but what do you think the families do? They talk to other families that may have not signed up and said, listen, listen what this nonprofit did out in 
all, all, out in Olive Branch. They made sure that kids were taken care of over the summer. Oh my goodness, you know, I keep, okay, I've got to stop talking about this, but I just had to say something, guys. And so thank you to everyone who participated, um, both if you were in here in person. I know a lot of people have donated <coughs> and given money to this as well, so... Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This was so phenomenal. I'm still on a high, and it's going to take me a little while to get um, to get down. But we're going to be doing this every week. 511 lunches out the door every Sunday to be delivered, to have relationships developed. So if you want to be a driver, you want to get a part of this, also message Destin Center. Just comment below here, and I promise that we will go and we'll get you connected. So, okay. That all to say... This is Pray First, and we are doing the Bible Project 21. So I really want to um, read a little bit from Scripture. I'll probably just finish out um, 2 Corinthians right now. I was going jump to um, jump into Galatians, but I got so excited with this. I, I, I don't think I can because I don't want to hurry, hurry and miss the point. And you know what? The point is people. Those of you that know me, I'm a very high D person, which means I'm extreme. well, and in my case, I'm extremely task oriented <coughs> and I'm an introvert. So all that stuff together sometimes makes it, um, makes it so I get so tasky. I want to finish this, finish this and finish this. But let me tell you, the pastor's teaching me to slow down, slow down. Um, it's just so, again, so excited to be part of this. All these children were loved on just we, we, we were the hands and feet and that mm, love. Love is all that matters. Love is all that matters. Let's continue with what Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians 12, all right? <clears throat> so that's where I'm starting, 2 Corinthians 12. Strength from weakness. You force me to talk this way and I do it against my better judgment. But now that we're at it, I may as well bring up the matter of visions and revelations that God gave me. For instance, I know a man who 14 years ago was seized by Christ and swept in ecstasy to the heights of heaven. I really don't know if this took place in the body or out of it. Only God knows. I also know that this man was hijacked into paradise. Again, whether in or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. There he heard the unspeakable spoken, but was forbidden to tell what he heard. This is the man I want to talk about. But about myself, I'm not saying another word apart from humiliations. If I had a mind to brag a little, I could probably do it without looking ridiculous, and I'd still be speaking plain truth all the way, but I'll spare you. I don't want anyone imagining me as anything other than the fool you've encountered if you saw me on the street or heard me talk. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head, I was the given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angels did his best to get me down. What he, in fact, did was push me to my knees. No danger than a walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of this as a gift, and I begged God to remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me, My grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. I love that. And I love the way the message version explained Paul's thorn in his eye. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. You guys, you really need to hear that. <clears throat> the weaker we feel inside, the stronger Christ becomes. And that's why, that's why we have thorns on our side. That's why so much happens is because it teaches us as disciples to fully lean on him. Because in our strength, we, could, we can't do it. Do you think any of that happened Sunday on our strength, on our abilities? That was craziness that happened yesterday. And it's only because of Christ that that actually happened. Whew. Well, now I've done it. I made a complete fool of myself by going on like this. But it's not all my fault. You put me up to it. You should have done doing this for me. You should have been doing this for me, excuse me. Sticking up for me and commending me instead of making me do it for myself. You know from personal experience that even if I'm a nobody and nothing, I wasn't second rate compared to those big shot apostles you're so taken with. All the signs that mark a true apostle were in evidence while I was with you through both good times and bad. Signs of potent, signs of wonder, signs of power. Did you get less of me or God in any of the other churches? The only thing you got less of was less responsibility for my upkeep. Well, I'm sorry. Forgive me for depriving you. Everything is in readiness now for you. 
for this, my third visit to you. But don't worry about it. You won't have to put yourselves out. I'll be no more of a bother to you this time than on the other visits. I have no interest in what you have, only in you. Children shouldn't have to look out for their parents. Parents look out for the kids. I'd be more than happy to empty my pockets, even mortgage my life for your good. So how does it happen that the more I love you, the less I'm loved? And why is it that if I keep coming across these whiffs of gossip about how my self-support was a front behind which I worked in a Lebrick scheme, where's the evidence? Did I cheat or trick you through anyone I sent? I asked Tysa to visit and sent some brothers along. Did they swindle you out of anything? And haven't we always been just as above board, just as honest? I hope you don't think that all along we've been making our defense before you, the jury. You're not the jury. God is the jury. God revealed in Christ, and we make our case before him. And we've gone all to the trouble of supporting ourselves so that we won't be in any way or get in any the way of your growing up. I do admit that I have fears that when I come, you'll disappoint me, and I'll disappoint you. And in frustration with each other, everything will fall to pieces. Quarrels, jealousy, flaring tempers, taking sides, angry roots, angry words, vicious rumors, swelled heads, and general bedlam. I don't look forward to a second humiliation by God among you, compounded by hot tears over that crowd that keeps sinning over and over in the same old ways, who refuse to turn away from the pigsty of evil, sexual disorder, and indecency in which they wallow. <coughs> Chapter 13. Well, this is my third visit coming up. Remember the scripture that says, a matter becomes clear after two or three witnesses give evidence. On my second visit, I warned that bunch that keep sitting over and over in the same old ways that when I come back, I wouldn't go easy on them. Now, preparing for the third, I'm seeing it again from a distance. If you haven't changed your ways by the time I get there, look out. <clears throat> you who have been demanding proof that Christ speaks through me will get more than you bargained for. You'll get the full force of Christ. Don't think you won't. He was sheer weakness and humiliation when he was killed on the cross, but oh, he's alive now in the mighty power of God. We weren't too much to look at either when we humiliate among you, but when we deal with you this next time, we'll be alive in Christ, strengthened by God. Test yourselves to make sure you're solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Do you hear that? We're supposed to test ourselves. That's important for us as disciples to do. Give yourselves regular checkups. <laughs> you need first-hand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Uh, that I have to say again. Test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need firsthand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. I hope the test won't show that we failed, but if it comes to that, we'd rather the test showed our failure than yours. We're rooting for the truth to win out in you. We couldn't possibly do otherwise. We don't just put up with our limitations, we celebrate them, and then go on to celebrate every strength, every triumph of the truth in you. We pray hard that it will all come together in your lives. I'm writing this to you now so that when I come, I won't have to say another word on the subject. The authority the master gave me is for putting people together, not taking them apart. I want to get on with it and not have to spend time on reprimands. And that's about it, friends. Be cheerful. Keep things in good repair. Keep your spirits up. Think in harmony. Be agreeable. Do all that, and the God of love and peace will be with you for sure. Greet one another with a holy embrace. All the brothers and sisters have said hello. The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Wow, does he know how to pray us out, right? So um, that is all I'm going to conclude for today so that we can jumpstart in Galatians. Remember, reading through the entire Bible, the Message Bible. <coughs> so, hey guys, do me a favor. If you um, were part or if you are encouraged by what you see in the screen behind me, with all these lunches and the people, so 200, two, over 200 people, 500 lunches per day. So that was over 2,500 lunches went out the door. There's still 2,500 there left, and we're gonna we're packing ahead so we make sure we have some for every week. People are delivered. Share this out. Um, you know what? It would be fantastic if this went nationwide, meaning like if different churches and nonprofits, they all gathered together to make sure that kids in the summer were not hungry. Because guess what? It should be the churches that do this. It really should be. We are the hands and feet. We are their answer to so many problems. And when you have a, hung when you have a hungry belly, it's hard to focus on other things, right? So anyways, let me pray us out. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much. <coughs> 
for your word, for the guidance, for for um, wisdom, Lord, eyes to see what it is that you want us to do. Lord, thank you that we have this platform called Pray First, that we're able to share your word, Lord, to encourage people, Lord. And as Paul says, Lord, we just want to just let everyone know the extravagant love of God. So no spirit, but your Holy Spirit have you way with my friends. Help them have a blessed week, and I can't wait to see them again soon. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, um, you guys go ahead and get your uh, week started. Uh, I cannot wait to see a lot of you again soon. Um, have a great day, all right? Hashtag live, hashtag share it again, and share this out.